Welcome to our review on stopping distances. So first thing we actually need to understand then are the four key terms for our lesson today. So first one we've got there is the braking distance, which quite simply is how far your car is going to be traveling from the moment you put the brakes on until it comes to a complete stop. Second one, the reaction time there, is how long it takes you to react to some kind of stimulus. So in this example, it would be how long does it take for the person to get their foot on the brake after seeing a child run into the road, for example. The thinking distance is how far the car is going to travel during that reaction time. So how far is the car going to travel between you seeing a hazard and getting your foot to the brake pedal? And finally, the stopping distance there is the thinking distance plus the braking distance. Now, a common question they will ask you is they will tell you that the thinking distance is 15 meters and the braking distance is 38 meters. So what is the total stopping distance? And all you need to do to work that out is add 15 and 38 to give you your answer of 53 meters. So one of the most common questions they're going to ask you on your exam paper, which is usually worth a good couple of marks, is to actually identify some factors that will affect the thinking distance and the braking distance. So what we need to think about first of all is if we're thinking about the factors that are going to affect the thinking distance, we're going to be considering those factors that affect the driver themselves because what we're looking at there is what's going to affect the time it takes you to react to a hazard. So you can have things like tiredness, drugs, alcohol, distraction, so playing on a mobile phone, having an argument, singing along to music, etc. and also your speed. Any of those will affect the distance that you travel in the time it takes you to see a hazard and respond to it. Now, the second part to that is looking at what factors are going to actually affect the braking distance. So, in this instance, it's what's going to affect the car's ability to come to a stop. So that would be things like the weather conditions, the condition of the brake pads, the condition of the tyres and the road condition itself, as well as the speed again. Now, one thing to be careful of here with the questions they're likely to ask you on your exam is that they could well say what factors will lead to an increase in braking distance. Now, if you just write down the weather, you will not get a mark, okay? You need to specify the type of weather that's going to lead to that increase in the braking distance. So you could say icy roads or wet roads, for example, but you've got to be very clear in saying what's going to have that effect, okay? So if it's asking you what's going to increase the braking distance, you can't just say the condition of the brakes. You'd have to say poor condition of the brakes, okay? So just go careful not to lose an easy mark there. Finally, then we just need to understand the relationship between our speed and the thinking and braking distances. So if we're considering our thinking distance first of all, then the speed and the thinking distance are directly proportional. So what that means then is if the speed doubles, the thinking distance is going to double. Okay, so that's what we can see on our graph there with the red line is that they are directly proportional to one another. If we then look at the braking distance line, which is the blue line on our graph there, we can see that they've got a different relationship and that relationship is what's called an exponential one. So what we see there is if we take two examples, so if our car is traveling at 30 miles an hour, then our braking distance is 15 meters, but at 60 miles an hour, it's gone up to 55 meters. So it's more than double. So the thing to remember is thinking distance is directly proportional. So as one doubles, the other doubles, whereas the braking distance is exponential. So that means we'll see a much greater effect on our braking distance due to speed.